Hi guys, so um, as you can see, I'm actually doing um, a few of these and this is the last one, which um, I think they're running fire alarm tests, which isn't actually supposed to happen until tomorrow, but um, I think they're doing a few little bips and bobs. Anyways, um, so one of my subscribers, actually a few people, but um, the one that I wrote down was R.S. Donald one um, she was asking me about hyperpigmentation and um, as I'm sure I've mentioned time and time again I definitely suffer from hyperpigmentation um, Asians are more susceptible to it um, just our skin happens to really really uh, be reactive to the sun and um, <clears throat> so she wanted me to do a video talking about it um, somewhat so if you don't suffer from hyperpigmentation obviously you can you know just um, stop watching I don't know, should you be telling people to stop watching your channel? I don't know. Yeah, you know what? If it doesn't apply to you, then forget it. Stop watching. Because um, it's just going to be me, blah, blah, blah. I don't have any products to show you. The one thing that I really, really love, um, I actually ran out of and I'm waiting for more to come in. So, uh, where can I start? Okay. Well, the first line of defense is sunscreen. Sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. And I really kind of, it was always sort of a bane of my existence, everyone telling me to use sunscreen and blah, and basically I kind of was like, screw you all, screw you all, you know, I heard it so many times that it just became droning and I just didn't even want to listen to it, and um, I really regret that, obviously, because now, well, for the last at least six years now, maybe even longer, I use it religiously, uh, and I'm sure I've mentioned it ad nauseum, um, rain, shine, some, whatever, whatever the weather is, whether it's overcast, whether it's super, super sunny, whether it's rainy, whether it's whatever, I wear it every single day. It's just part of my skincare routine and I found that that was the best way to incorporate it. Wasn't to actually wait until there was a sunny day and put it on. Just get used to using it every single day as part of your regimen. And because I found um, one that I absolutely love that actually gives a really beautiful sort of sheen to the skin. It's made me more apt to use it because I really, really love the product and I love the way my skin looks when I have it on. So it's almost like a beauty product, like a skincare beauty product. And, um, and I use it all the time and my makeup looks uh, fantastic with having that sunscreen underneath. If I don't use it, um, because I did test it out, uh, not that, you know, on days that I wouldn't be going outside. Um, I don't like my skin as much, so, and that happens to be the skin SkinCeuticals. Um, Ultimate Defense, I believe, we get it packaged differently in Canada um, than you would have in the States. I'm not sure about Europe or elsewhere, but I use the skin SkinCeuticals one, and it's phenomenal, my personal favorite. Um, so, if you are like me and you didn't listen and you went out into the sun and you did some tanning beds which I did luckily not for a long period of time I was really lucky I went into my whole punk goth mod that whole thing and my whole look was to be as ghastly white as I could possibly be I mean just like translucent and white is the look that I was going for at the time <laughs> so I was always Never tanning out of the sun. It was just, um, it was, it was, you know, a whole fashion statement that I was making. So I was really lucky that I actually went into those particular, um, you know, styles and, and peccadillos. Well, that's not really a peccadillo. Oh my God. I think I've made too many videos in a row because now I'm just like swimming in my head. Um, yeah, I'm grateful for having gone that route because it did save me from being in the sun for quite a few years. But then, you know, once I hit sort of mid-20s and saw myself with a tan and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, why do you have to look so good with a tan? Why does everybody look so good with a tan? So then I went into a bit of a tanning phase um, and uh, and then stopped, obviously, when I started to see the, uh, the damage. And especially, you know, I saw, where is it? This thing here a little bit and I just discounted it. I was like, I still kept going and still kept tanning. It just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it just freaked me out because it had gotten quite big and there was nothing that I could do about it at all. And, um, oh my God, I rambled for 449. Okay. So if you're like me and you've already done it, like I was telling RS Donald one, 
laser is the only thing that will get rid of it entirely. Um, you can use things to fade it, but laser, IPL treatments, now people have had good um, and bad. Some people have scarred worse, sometimes their hyperpigmentation is worse. And it really is the practitioner who is doing the laser on you. Um, I was mentioning to somebody else because they said, never do it, never do it. She's had scarring, She they had gone too high with her and it made it look even worse. She regrets it to this day. Um, the places that I've gone to, they really know the difference with Asian skin and they flat out said, I heard it from one and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. When I went to another place, they also said exactly the same thing. So um, that's really what you want to hear. You want to hear some continuity with it. And um, because our skin is as sensitive and very particular, um, it responds to IPL differently. So if I was to go in and buy, say, a package of three, um, they would actually give me six treatments for the same price of three because they would be using such a low frequency that, you know, by the time my six um, treatments were done, I may have never even gotten up to the level of one treatment that, say, a Caucasian person would use. That's how low the treatment has to be because our skin scorches and burns and scabs and scars very, very easily. So you want to make sure that whoever's doing the laser treatments knows our skin type in particular and that they're using such a low frequency and you have to do multiples and obviously that they're not going to charge you for more of them just because they're having to do that to save you from scarring. So that's one. That's why it's, I've always sort of been on the fence. So if you do do IPL, make sure you talk to your practitioner about that specifically um, and the fact that it can scar you. So you are taking a bit of a risk. Um, the other thing is um, retinols, retinoids, things like that. Um, my skin, again, too sensitive to use it on a daily basis. It really makes my skin dry and flaky and irritated. So I tend to not use them. I have tried certain ones, um, and if they're gentle enough, I will. Uh, the thing that I have noticed the most is um, two things in conjunction. Skin pseudos. Skin Ceuticals CE Ferulic. I can't speak enough about it. I have it in another video, my Daytime Skin Care Part 2, where it's specifically just that product, and also on my blog. Um, it's the most phenomenal product that I've ever used, not only for glowing skin, for sort of collagen rebuilding. It blocks out 96 to 98% of the sun's harmful rays. Your body absorbs it. It's in your skin for three days. You cannot wash it off once it's been absorbed. Um, and um, it's more for dry skin because of the E, uh, the vitamin E. It can be moisturizing. It's maybe too moisturizing for oily skin. Um, but people with oily skin have also used it. Uh, almost every dermatologist that I've ever talked to doesn't leave the house without it. I love it. My skin is markedly different if I don't use that particular product. I've tried to go into Obagi and stuff, which is what I'm using right now. I don't like it as much as the SkinCeuticals. Mind you, it's a fraction of the cost, but I still like the SkinCeuticals better. Um, and it's phenomenal. I use that with the White Lucent Shiseido Cleansing Foam. And I think those two things together in the summertime, anytime your pigmentation sees the sun again, even if you're wearing sunscreen, if you're out for the whole day, it will come back. As much as I fade it in the winter, as soon as the summer hits, it comes back. So... Um, anytime I use those products in conjunction, which is all the time, um, I start to see it fade again. So there's that. I would urge people to stay away from an ingredient or uh, not a chemical, I'm not sure. It's called hydroquinone. Um, it's used a lot. In, in fact, if you go to a dermatologist, that's probably what he's going to prescribe you. It has been banned in all of Asia and all of Europe as a pars uh, a possible carcinogenic. I believe it's pending in Canada and they are possibly going to be banning it as well. I say when it, when there's places in the world that cease to use and allow that to be used as an ingredient in any of their products, I just think it's good policy to just not use it. So um, I've talked to dermatologists who poo pooed that because it's still um, you know, available in North America, but having done my research, um, it's banned and I will just stay away from it altogether. So that's the only thing that I can really suggest. There's kojic acid, there's licorice, there's other things that you can use um, that are a more natural sort of lightening agent rather than the hydroquinone. So um, if you do need more information, I do feel a bit rushed now because I'm running out of time, uh, please let me know. But hopefully that's helped a few of you with the same, you know, issues that I have. Thanks so much for watching.